Welcome to the Cosmic Busker. My name is Bobby Cody. In this video, I want to take a look at some recent archaeological discoveries and the fact that it actually, um, some of these discoveries are actually spoken about in the Bible. I want to read from a portion of Genesis. This comes from the King James Version of the Bible. I'll also put it up there in the corner real quick so you can take a look at it. But it's King James Version of the Bible, Genesis 6-4. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which are of old, men of renown. Now, there have been different translations of this. I've seen uh, translations where it says Nephilim as well. Uh, it appears that the same giants or Nephilim may also be the Anakai of the Bible. The Bible also references Anakai. Um, from what I've seen in different interpretations I've read, in all cases, these were very, very large individuals. Uh, now, the question becomes, who were these individuals? Uh, is this actually true, or is this just some type of a fantasy in the Bible? Uh, much of the Bible, um, you know, which uh, scholars, you know, scientific scholars, have been wont to discard with, uh, has turned out to be true. Um, and in this case, we have archaeological discoveries which actually prove that there were giants in the past. Um, and I want to take a look at that. Um, this new discovery, and it's very recent in the past few years, is a new type of hominid or human. Uh, they've been termed the Denisovans. So I want to take a look at a couple articles on the Denisovans and we'll see that these may in fact be the giants of the Bible, or at least their descendants may be the giants of the Bible. Uh, they're mixed descendants because the Denisovans, this other giant hominid, certainly had the capacity to breed with humans, it appears. Uh, we'll talk about that evidence, which is fascinating and it changes our entire history of our species. Uh, human history just completely changes based on all this stuff, and we're just starting to 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 get a handle on what our ancient past was like. So I want to cut right now to an article on Denisovans. Uh, we'll go through a couple articles, look at some photographs as well of uh, some of the fossils of Den Denisovans and how they compare to humans. And you'll see that this is really, really fascinating stuff. It just changes completely the history of humanity. And everything that uh, you learned in school is probably going to have to be relearned. So let's cut this article right now. Okay, this article is from sciencemag.org. It's written by Ann Gibbons on March 29, 2019. Link will be provided below in the description. Subheadline reads, Our mysterious cousins, the Denisovans, may have mated with modern humans as recently as 15,000 years ago. The elusive Denisovans, the extinct cousins of Neanderthals, are known from only the scraps of bone they left in Siberia's Denosova cave in Russia, and the genetic legacy they bequeathed to the living people across Asia. A new study of that legacy in people from New Guinea now suggests that, far from being a single group, these mysterious humans were so diverse that their populations were as distantly related to each other as they were to Neanderthals. In another startling suggestion, the study implies one of those groups may have survived and encountered modern humans as recently as 15,000 to 30,000 years ago, tens of thousands of years later than researchers had thought. Researchers already knew that living people from a vast area spanning the Philippines and New Guinea to China and Tibet 
have inherited 3 to 5% of their DNA from Denisovans. The leading scenario has suggested that as modern humans swept out of Africa, they first encountered Neanderthals and mated with them. Hence, all people in Europe and Asia now have 1 to 3% of their DNA from Neanderthals. The ancestors of Asians then encountered Denisovans 50,000 years ago or so and acquired 3 to 5% of their DNA from them. The finding of two Denisovan lineages in Southeast Asia adds to results reported in Cell last year by Sharon Browning of the University of Washington in Seattle and her colleagues. They have suggested that New Guineans had a separate source of Denisovan DNA than people in East Asia, suggesting at least two mixing events. So what we have here in this article is two different mixing events where these Denisovans, this other species of human, interbred with humans on two separate occasions and Asians have DNA descended from these interbreeding events. Uh, in addition, uh, mentioned here in the article as well, Neanderthals also interbred with humans. Uh, both Asians and Europeans have Neanderthal DNA as well. What we have here is Homo sapiens are a hybrid species. Uh, we carry DNA from different interbreeding events with different hominids. Uh, one thing I'd just like to mention as well, uh, it hasn't been identified who yet, but uh, Africans as well, they've, they've actually identified uh, what's termed, uh, I forget the proper term for it, for, but DNA in Africans that is not in any other Homo sapiens and which they are certain is from a now unidentified ancient hominid. So Africans as well, it appears, are a hybrid. Uh, Homo sapiens are a hybrid species. Uh, one of the reasons we have such different characteristics, uh, different skin color, uh, different hair, different, uh, you know, various aspects, uh, characteristics of our persons, is because we're a hybrid species. Um, so now I want to take a look at the giant aspect of this. Uh, you know, we've already shown that there is interbreeding, um, but giants? Giants. Let's take a look at this article's headline real quick. I'm only going to go to the headline because the headline doesn't really, uh, the article doesn't go into depth in any way, shape, or form about the headline. Uh, so I'm going to read, show you the headline and then we're just going to cut to a photo. So let's go to the headline real quick on this article. This article is from the smithsonianmag.org. I'll provide a link down below in the description so you can look at it yourself. As you can see, the headline reads, DNA from a huge tooth confirms a new ancient cousin. Now despite that headline blaring huge tooth, goes into no real detail about what that means, that the tooth is so huge. So I want to cut real quick over to a look at that Denisovan tooth and compared to the normal human tooth, our own teeth and the size. And you can get a good idea of how much bigger that tooth is in comparison to modern humans' to teeth. Let's take a look at that picture right now. On the left here, you see the modern human's tooth, or a homo sapiens tooth. On the right, we have the Denisovan tooth, or molar. Now, to my eye, it may not be twice as high, but the, the general mass, Denisovan looks about twice the mass. So as you can see, the size of the teeth is just, you know, compared to human teeth, it's just very, very large. 
Uh, now, some might argue, well, it's just the teeth. They just had really big teeth. It wasn't just the teeth. Uh, we'll take a look and cut over to Wikipedia real quick. That Wikipedia talks about a finger bone that was found and what they say about the finger bone. Let's take a look real quick and I'll come right back. The Wikipedia page on Denisovans reads, The single finger bone is unusually broad and robust, well outside the variation seen in modern people. So as you can see, it wasn't just a case of large teeth, everything else is normal size. The finger was, the size of the finger was well outside the variation found in normal people well outside so the finger bone was extremely large too which means the fingers were extremely large uh, once you take in the, the teeth and the fingers you can just expand that out uh, in order for the teeth to be so large you would have had been a larger skull much more t powerful jaws in order to be able to handle those those large teeth, uh, those large molars, fingers so large as well, then it would have to be in large muscles. The whole entire body would have had to have been correspondingly larger. Uh, you know, with the teeth, as you can see, uh, we're looking at, I guesstimate, about twice the mass. I think you can safely assume that Denisovans are probably about twice the mass of humans as well. You know, you're probably talking five, four, five hundred pounds maybe even. Um, perhaps twice as large, uh, ten feet, twelve feet, maybe even, maybe even correspondingly bigger, fifteen, twenty feet. I believe that there is information in the Bible that they translate as these giants being 16 to 20 feet. I may be wrong about that. I'm doing this off the top of my head. Um, but there was something else very interesting found uh, when they found these Denisovan fossils. They didn't just find fossils um, of these creatures. They found some of their creations too. Jewelry. Now let's take a look at what it, an article has to say about that, and we'll also take a look at a photo of that jewelry. Let's cut that right now. This article is from the Siberian Times and is dated August 2nd, 2017. Is this stunning bracelet made by Paleolithic man for his favorite woman really 70,000 years old? Startling new scientific evidence is to be reviewed by international experts which, if true, would transform our knowledge of the skills and sophistication of early man. It is already known as the oldest stone bracelet in the world, believed to have been made not by ancient Homo sapiens, but the extinct Denisovan species of early humans, and previously dated as being between 40,000 and 50,000 years old. New findings suggest it could be 65 to 70,000 years old, long before ancient people were believed to be capable of making such remarkable objects. The bracelet is stunning. In bright sunlight, it reflects the sun rays. At night by the fire, it casts a deep shade of green. Said Professor Anatole Derevyanko, the Institute's former director. It is unlikely it was used as an everyday jewelry piece. I believe this beautiful and very fragile bracelet was worn only for some exceptional moments, he said. What made the discovery especially striking was that the manufacturing technology is more common to a much later period, such as the Neolithic era. Indeed, it is not clear yet how the Denisovans could have made the bracelet with the skills that they had. Well, apparently we're going to have to rethink the skills that these Denisovans had. There's this mistaken assumption that the further back we go, the more primitive we find people. In fact, 
you know, the Great Pyramid, Teotihuacan, uh, uh, Baalbek in Lebanon, and I'll talk about those in coming videos. But these are all ancient structures that we could not create today, or we would have a very, very difficult time creating them. And as some uh, scholars have said, why would we go to such outrageous and hard to do lengths to create these types of structures, such as the Great Pyramid and Baalbek represent? Baalbek is in Lebanon, and I'll talk about that in later videos. These Denisovans were much more sophisticated um, than we can even possibly realize. Not only that, but we've seen they were much, much bigger. They were giants, probably the giants that the Bible speaks of. And they made it with humans, again, just as the Bible speaks of. They also made it with Neanderthals. So, um, now, I, as you can see, I put a photo from the Siberian, that Siberian Times article of the bracelet up in the corner so you could take a look at it. Uh, there are much more uh, photos and um, pictures and drawings of the bracelet as well in the Siberian Times article. I included that in the description down below so I suggest you take a look and, and uh, read more about it along with all of the articles that I have referenced in another article that talks about how one of the bones, finger bones, that they looked at um, and they did a DNA analysis of, the individual was part Neanderthal, part Denisovan. So not only were the Denisovans mating with us, and not only were the Neanderthals mating with us, but the Denisovans and the Neanderthals were mating as well. Uh, there's this uh, mistaken assumption that I started this video, this little clip out with that, you know, uh, ancient man was primitive um, and that Neanderthal was primitive. Uh, I believe nothing could be further from the truth. I think it's highly likely Neanderthal were more intelligent than we were and much more sophisticated than we have ever given them credit with being. We'll talk about this in future videos, but uh, thanks for watching. Click on those links down below. Do a little research on the Denisovans. It's very fascinating. Um, and other than that, everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching.